This week on The Stampede, we say goodbye to the seniors who helped rebuild the SMU Mustangs. It's been a great experience uh, all the way through. How they changed the program and how it changed them. You won't get to have that type of fellowship um, that we have right now. You won't get to have that in the, in the future. And that's one thing I'm gonna miss more than anything. And the Rice Owls come to Ford Stadium for the year's final battle. No mercy on three, one, two, three. No mercy! The journey seems endless for a freshman football player starting a college career. Hours and hours of sweat-filled practices, high-intensity weight training, long meetings, and of course, breathtaking games lay ahead. McDermott is looking deep down the middle of the field. He's actually going left side. It's Derek Thompson, and he makes a catch in the end zone. Touchdown, SMU. First career TD for the redshirt freshman. Keep playing like you are, brother. You look like a better. But for 20 SMU Mustangs, the college experience is coming to a close. The senior class won't have the notoriety of Doak Walker or the fabled Pony Express, but these players did something that may have been even more difficult. They helped turn SMU around and put it back on the map. J.J. McDermott throws to the right side into double coverage, and he gets it over the defense in a terrific one-handed grab by Cole Beasley at the 17 as he runs out of bounds, and the Mustangs have their third straight first down. J.J. is going to fire it deep down the near side, and there it yes, yes, yes. has everybody made it to 30, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, SMU! Richard Coffer to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, SMU! The stories of these players are as diverse as the team itself, but they all have something in common. They all tell the story of young men who made a commitment to greatness and reap the rewards. Paul Hall goes with a, a pump fake to his right, and then he's sacked to the backfield at the 30-yard line by Taylor Thompson. Offensive lineman Kelvin Beecham was recruited by former coach Phil Bennett. Like many players, he hailed from a small town and had to adjust to the big city. The first couple of days on campus were a little rough, coming from uh, Mahaya, uh, a very rural um, and, and country type of town, to the big city. Um, didn't really know many people, didn't know the family that I had up here at the time. Um, so being here was, was, was a little difficult. Not long after, June Jones became head coach. A change in culture, uh, and that was one thing I think this university needed, was a, was a change in culture. You know, we were winning. We're doing things that has, hasn't been done in, in many years. Once Coach Jones got here, we, it, we changed the culture of how SMU has perceived. And even here in Dallas, we've changed the way of how SMU is perceived. And there's still some ways to go. And with this change, Beach began to change himself. He became a starter and eventually learned he could make just as big an impact off the field. I've really taken the academic side serious, just like I take the, uh, the, the football side. But with that, Coach Jones has is, is encouraged me to be a leader. Um, so I, I took that and, and, and ran with it. Got involved with the, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, which I'm the president of. I'm also on the, the SME Board of Trustees, which I was recommended for by the chairman of that board, Paul Lloyd. Uh, just to name a few. I mean, I, I'm involved in so many things, but you know, I, I've taken the opportunity, you know, the opportunity just to, to, to do something with, you know, do something with my life. I think of all the linemen that I've had, he, he probably is uh, more determined to be the best he can be than any player I've had. He's uh, just a great kid. You know, he uh, wants to know everything, to how to be at the, the highest level, but also leads, not by uh, yelling and shouting, but by example. Kelvin is leaving SMU with as bright a future as a person could have and he wouldn't change it for the world. He has the character that uh, the great ones have, and I think we'll be seeing him play on Sundays. He's, he's, uh, he's because he wants to, and uh, he's got the ability, he's got the smarts, and the desire to be the best he can be, and I, I would think that he'll make it in the National Football League. My dream on the field has been a goal. Um, I want to play in the NFL. I want to play for a long time. I want to be with an organization for 10 plus years. I want to start consecutive games. 
Um, you know, like I've had here 50 consecutive, I want to be able to go and play in the NFL for 200, 300 more consecutive days. A dream of mine has always been to, to, to play so long that I take care of my grandchildren, not only my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. And that's a dream of mine. The Mustangs earned a trip to a bowl for the third straight time this year. The man who led them under center, J.J. McDermott, took the long and winding road to the hilltop. It seemed unlikely he'd ever get a chance to show his stuff coming into this season. But when Kyle Padron struggled against A&M in the first game, June Jones turned to J.J. and never looked back. McDermott's signature moment came against arch-rival TCU in the battle for the iron skillet. High at 33 in overtime. Five wide this time for McDermott. Cole Lofton, the extra receiver. TCU showing a blitz, but they only bring four. McDermott looks to his right. He's got to throw for the end zone. Yes, touchdown! Jeremy Johnson, first of his career! Here comes McDermott in overtime in Eamon Carter Stadium and drops back and manages to throw the pass. Yeah, that kid will be talking about that at the SMU reunions 35 years from today. JJ's story shows that you never know what will happen in college football and that greatness awaits you, sometimes when you least expect it. Really, I'm just, I'm just so thankful for, uh, you know, the, the opportunity, um, you know, not only to play here, but to be able to come to school here. And, uh, you know, the, the coaches have been great. You know, like I said earlier, I don't think there's a better coaching staff in the country. I think you'd be hard pressed to find one. And uh, same thing goes for the guys in that locker room. Um, you know, great teammates just all around. and. Uh, enjoyed being a part of the whole thing. The SMU football program has experienced a dramatic turnaround under coach June Jones. He recruits a special type of player, athletes who are ready to contribute on game day and who are ready to grow as men on and off the field. Of the 28 players in his first recruiting class, 15 are still on the team, including one of the most vocal, enthusiastic leaders any team will ever have, Chris Banjo. Let's go! Let's go! He's a great guy. He's very passionate. You know, out there on the field, he's a he's a real vocal leader, and uh, he takes care of his business. You know, he, he works hard, and uh, he's a great guy to be around. You know, great team guy. Chris is is a guy that's been playing for us for a long time. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, I mean, he's a great player. You know, he, he, he's really grown into, into a good leader. I think a lot of the guys in the, look up, in the locker room look up to him, and uh, he, he does a good job leading the team. The guy comes to work every day, man. Uh, uh, took a couple classes with him. Uh, is, a, is a character. He's a funny guy. Uh, just loves to have a good time, but at the same time, he knows when it's time to work. Banjo has made a huge impact with his play and presence. Get it in, let's go. And in turn, SMU has brought Chris more than he ever expected. The coaching staff we have is a very mature coaching staff, you know, which has allowed me to mature a lot individually. Coach Gans, senior and Coach Gans Jr. has done a, have done a great job in terms of, you know, teaching a lot of life lessons. So has Coach Jones and, you know, in terms of uh, perseverance and, you know, just the whole responsibility of becoming a man. And I think our coach staff does a great job of that. And you know, the degree here at SMU is phenomenal. You know, the relationships you build, the networking that comes with it is real great. And you know, I, I think I've done a great job in terms of doing a good job in the classroom. Chris Banjo, uh, he was one of our first uh, recruits. And uh, right away, we kind of, while we were recruiting him, realized the type of uh, kid he was, and not just football player, but the type of character he had. And that's kind of what we, needed to do is change the uh, character of the team and and you got to do that with uh, the right kind of people in early 2009 coach jones awarded banjo perhaps the most prestigious number the school has to offer number 23 the number worn by mustang hero jerry levias it's a great honor not only a great honor but also a great blessing you know just to be mentioned with the great dr jerry levias you know 
with everything he's been through, you know, everything he stands for, just being mentioned in the same sentence is, is, is just phenomenal. It's just a phenomenal feeling knowing that I was chosen to wear that number. CB is, uh, was the first uh, winner of our Jerry Levias Award, which uh, exemplified not just uh, you know on the field performance, but the, the development of the character and, and your schoolwork and, and other things outside of football. And there couldn't have been a, a, a more uh, genuine and more real first time winner of that award. Receiver Terrence Wilkerson was recruited by former coach Phil Bennett, but he instantly began to thrive when June Jones became coach. He started a total of 20 games in his freshman and sophomore years under Coach Jones. But SMU players make a commitment to be student athletes. And if they don't make the grade, they don't wear the pads. This last season, I, I did not play uh, because I had some you know, issues with my academics. Terrence's story shows SMU's commitment to athletes as students. Terrence was given all the help he needed. He reached within himself and found he did have what it takes to make it as a student as well as a player. He's conscientious, he tries to do the things the, the right way, he's got some talent, he's got some speed, he can run. He's been a, a, a great kid because he too, wants every play every day, he goes 110% uh, as, it's, as, it's, as if it's game day. And uh, you know, if you have those qualities in life, you give everything you can, you're gonna be successful. It's been a great journey, uh, you know, it's taught me a lot of things, you know taught me how to persevere, um, just, you know, keep going. And, uh, man, I, I, I'm just thankful for my experience here since I've been here. His turnaround in the classroom led him back to the gridiron where he racked up 545 yards and two touchdowns this season. But most of all, he's taken part of something special. It's just been a fun ride, you know. Uh, it's definitely something that, you know, you don't want to take for granted. And, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate the game. and. You know, it's been, it's been fun. I'm, I'm very blessed to be a part of history. Like all of the seniors, lineman Kelly Turner has experienced a front row view of SMU's football renaissance. His SMU adventure shows how quickly time flies as a student athlete and what a great impact a group of players can make when they fully commit. Our uh, starting five right now, we had a mission, our, our freshman year being we're going to be the starting five. We're going to be the ones to bring back this program. We're going to set the tone, set the standard of what SMU football really means. And it's just being meaningful, being TCU, and just overcoming a bunch of obstacles and just having those two 1-11 seasons, Coach Bennett's last year and then Coach Jones's first year, and then be able to go into Hawaii while well, that next year was just... It was, it was really meaningful and it was just great. And all the sweat and hard work has paid off for Kelly. His plan is to play on Sundays, but being a pony has provided him with a solid backup plan. Being from SMU and also I'm also from Dallas, it's just a great networking opportunity and just if I don't have the NFL to fall back on, I've been just working my years here, being able to connect with people and be able to get a job, hopefully a nice job. As the Mustang season comes to a close, its seniors are reflecting on the impact the school and its coach, June Jones, have made on their lives. Coach Jones has made a huge imprint on his players. Coach Jones really, you know, showed us another side of coaching. You know, he's a player's coach. He really develops relationships with, you know, with, with the guys on the team. And he genuinely cares about us. And uh, that's something that you don't really see quite often. Not only is he a really good X's and O's type of guy, you know, uh, he's really just just a great man. I think I think he genuinely cares about the players. I mean, that's really all you can ask for in a coach, you know, just somebody that that's gonna stand up and, and lead the team and uh, lead by example, and you know, not only talk about it but be about it. I was gonna throw the 50 Z fade and get you another TD pass, but great job. <laughs> I didn't want you to to have too many. Coach Jones is like a father to all the players. You know, he treats you like a man, and uh, whenever you make mistakes, he's going to treat you like a man, and he's going to give you consequences like a man. One thing that he's really um, put in me is to enjoy the journey. Sometimes we, we get so caught up in, in what we want to do, what we want to do next, why we didn't do so well here. Coach, what, what can I do to make things better? And his, his response to a lot of my questions, like, Kelvin, just enjoy the journey. 
You know, you're going to be a great football player. You're going to be a great person. Enjoy the journey. In the end, after all the practices, study halls, and meetings, it is the thrill of game day and lighting up the scoreboard that gets the SMU Mustangs excited. It's very electrifying. You know, you have that smoke going back and forth. You know, you have the team rocking back and forth. Everybody's, you know, getting real hype. And, you know, it just when you run out of there, it's just you turn into a new, a completely different person. At that time, you, you know it's time to play. And, you know, the fans are cheering. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, all the game planning and all the things like that is over. It's just time to get out there and do what you do. Yeah, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's exciting. Um, you know, anytime you get a chance to, to play in front of the, the home fans, you know, the guys that are cheering you on. It's, uh, it's definitely something special and, and something I'm going to miss in the future. It's something about just hearing that crowd, hearing the band, seeing Peruna, seeing the Mustangs run up and down the field as you run out. And, you know, I've, I've been blessed to, to be a captain for many years, so I get to come out before uh, the game. And that is even a better experience to experience the, 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 the energy, the, the, the atmosphere of, of, you know, the game. It's something about this stadium, it's something about SMU that really just kind of just raises the goosebumps on you. But in college football, the bonds are forged like nowhere else in life, and the memories will extend far beyond the gridiron. Well, you know, the, the, the bottom line of what we talk about all the time are the kids, uh, you know, are going to remember not so much the playing of the games, but uh, the times in the locker room, the times uh, going out to dinner, the, the times that they're friends, basically. And, and these friendships and these lessons that they learn, battling through some of the adversity that we battle through every week, uh, uh, that you learn in the game of football and learn in our locker rooms are really what what uh, are gonna define you as a person. These kids know now, they've been here four years, they know what it takes to, to achieve their goals, and you know they decide whether they wanna do that. You won't get to have that type of fellowship um, that we have right now. You won't get to have that in the, in the future. And that's one thing I'm gonna miss more than anything. The cold winds are blowing into Ford Stadium on the SMU campus in Dallas. Today, 20 senior players are preparing for their final regular season game. Seven for the seniors was the mantra in the locker room this week, referring to a seventh victory for the year's team. The Mustangs are already bowl eligible, but the players want to send the seniors away with a win. Rice has a good football team. The record is not indicative of their team. They're just like us. Uh, uh, they had a tougher schedule probably, you know, playing two Big Ten teams and, and uh, uh, going, uh, doing, doing what they did to get here. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a, a credible team, and we're going to have to make those plays in the game to win. SMU started quickly. Quarterback J.J. McDermott connects with Darius Johnson on the team's second drive. 45 yard line, McDermott, play action, a receiver screen to Johnson, left side 45, nice cut to the 40, 35, 30, cuts inside of a tackler to the 20, to the 10, and Darius Johnson takes it in, 45 yards, touchdown SMU. Get out, out. nice job. Then it's early in the second quarter, Jared Williams, who's replacing injured starter Zach Lyne, Rolls off the first big run of his college career. View at their 48. Here's Jared Williams up the middle, breaks a tackle at the Woo! 45 to the 40 to the 30. Jared Williams off to the races to the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, SMU! The touchdown has made the score 14 to nothing, SMU, and hopefully signals a blowout game for the Ponies. But momentum shifts the next time the Mustangs get the ball. McDermott. Looking left, scans back to his right. He's going to lob it down the right sideline. Darius Johnson backed off the play because he knew a defender was coming, and Xavier Webb picks it. Coming left to the 30, to the 25. He spins back inside to the 20. Breaks a tackle there. He's down to the 15, and finally Kelly Turner is going to tackle him. And Rice capitalizes immediately. Back to pass, throws right side. It's caught at the 5. Touchdown. The score is now 14-7. to seven. The team takes to the locker room where Coach Jones makes his intentions clear. Do not lose this game. Win it at all costs. Keep going, go 100 miles an hour. Let's get it done. Hey, 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 hey
The second half isn't easy, but no one thought it would be. On SMU's third play from scrimmage, a turnover haunts the team once again. And they hand it to Jared Williams, who never had the football. It's loose, and it's going to be picked up by Allen, running it back to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, make it Cameron Nwosu. As the fourth quarter dawns, the score is Rice 17, SMU 14. The players know they must come together one last time for the team, for fans, and mostly for the seniors. They switched, and he was going to stay with the deeper. I was going to stay with the one he stayed on. It's SMU's first play of the quarter, and senior standout Cole Beasley gets it done, as he has so many times before. Now, junior Darius Johnson gets in on the app. He'll have to throw quickly and does. It's caught Darius Johnson at the 10, breaks a tackle to the 5. The Mustangs punch it into the end zone and reclaim the lead 21 to 17. Then it's one drive later. SMU has the ball at the Rice 39 yard line and the call goes to freshman Rashad Wimley from Forney, Texas. Rashad is a six foot, 295 pound former defensive tackle who looks every bit the part of a defensive lineman. But on this play, he transforms himself into a 295-pound end zone seeking missile. Bringing five and a handoff goes right up the middle. Wembley to the 35, yeah. to the 30, right to the 20, to the 10, to the five, and he drags a man into the end zone. Second touchdown today for Rashad Wembley. The touchdown puts the Mustangs up 27 to 17. The game out of reach for Rice. The final score is 27-24. The players take the field to the sounds of varsity. Some for the very last time. The victory is a great way to send out graduating seniors who made such a mark on this program. The players celebrate with their families and friends. Senior Cole Beasley expresses his feelings about what SMU has brought to his life. It's been a great experience uh, all the way through. It's been a great four years. Uh, it was a little tough first year when we got here, but uh, we stuck with it. Everybody stuck with it, all the seniors. And we eventually got to where we can go to bowl games every year. So, I mean, I just, wanted, I just want the SMU to keep getting better every year. These players will be remembered as the class who turned SMU into a new positive direction, who helped take the team to its first bowl victory in 25 years, who helped bring the Iron Skillet back to the hilltop. But more than that, they are leaving SMU as men, men who have learned to give it their best not just in football, but in every aspect of their lives. Men who have a bright future ahead of them and now have the tools to succeed. Men who have laid it on the line time and again, tasted both victory and defeat, and had the times of their lives doing it.